I'm Peter McCann, Northern Ireland correspondent with the Irish Farmers Journal. We're at a dairy conference today organised by the Farmers Journal and the Ulster Farmers Union focusing on the future of the Northern Ireland dairy industry. One of the speakers was Chris Osborne, who's a dairy policy officer with the Ulster Farmers Union. Chris, one of the reasons we're here and talking about is dairy farmers in Northern Ireland have been focused on producing uh, high yields, producing litres of milk, without sometimes being focused on the actual cost of those litres. Is that how you would see it for the industry? Partially, yes, Peter. We've got the situation where there was rapid expansion uh, over a 20-year period where Northern Ireland started producing a large volume of milk. Now we have a situation where there's an incredible amount of milk around and we think that there could be a better way forward in terms of getting paid for the quality within milk. Because you remember, 87.5% of milk is actually water and we think that there's a lot of quality that can be taken advantage of. Um, so how, how do we do, how do we take advantage of the quality, Chris? Is, is a change in, in the structure of the payment system for farmers? That's absolutely correct. Um, we need to start looking a little bit differently at how milk is actually priced in Northern Ireland because currently you're getting paid on volume. Vo and volume, as I mentioned before, is a large amount of liquid. And if you could get paid on, say, for example, the butterfat content or the protein content, uh, we think that the industry could definitely evolve and uh, develop towards a more sustainable future. And it, it, it's winners and losers in that, but you know, a high yielding a dairy farmer, you know, perhaps with relatively low solids, he, would he set to lose in that? You know, is, is that something the industry wants in general? Or? No, I think at the end of the day, there's a, there could be a misconception out there that the higher volume guy could lose. And some of my uh, speakers who went on before me uh, this afternoon actually did prove that that might necessarily be the case. But what's actually clear is that as an industry and as a milk pool, uh, more people would benefit than those that would actually um, not benefit. So with most of the processors in Northern Ireland being farmer-owned uh, co-ops, where, where, does the, where does the change start from? Obviously, uh, you know, putting a, co a cow and calf today, it's, it's a, and changing the genetics, whatever, it's a long time before that we get to the point where there's a, a good number of those heifers producing milk in the herd. So it's a long-term change. Is there a, a process in that, if it was to change, and where does it start from? We believe that uh, the, the, the conversation needs to start at the top, and the top means the board members within the co-ops or within the processing companies, and they need to just start the debate within the co-ops and develop it from there. But in terms of uh, this being a quick fix, it's certainly not going to be that. We think that through genetics, through nutrition, and through better on-farm management, that this can actually come about. Chris Osborne, thanks very much for your time.